Hi y'all. Today we're going to turn a pepper mill. And if you can believe it, I've never turned one before. So it ought to be a fun fun project. Uh, pepper mill, is, similar to a box, is a very sequential process. So you need to understand what all the steps are. Uh, I think I've got a pretty good handle on it. I've done a lot of research and looked at how a lot of people different did it. There's a lot of ways to do it. it. This is certainly not the only way. It may not be the best way, but it's the way, the way that I hope will work uh, for me as we go through and do some problem solving on the way. Hi y'all, Mike Peace Wood Turning and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a better wood turner. So if that's what you're interested in, click on the subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss future videos. Let's start with wood. The wood needs to be uh, a dry, needs to be at least three inches across and approximately an inch, inch and a half longer than the completed uh, mill uh, is going to be. Wood dries at about a, an inch per year plus, plus a, a year. So a rough rule of thumb is if this is three inches long it's going to take about four, four years for it to dry. I've had this piece of ornamental cherry that we're going to be turning to, today for about five years. It's been my shop, in my shop for for a couple of years, so presumably it's dry. Uh, other places you can get blank if you, blanks if you're not able to dry your own is uh, turning squares from some some vendors and, and possibly some uh, some sawmills. Uh, baseball bat blanks work. Uh, you can get uh, blanks used for table legs. So there are different alternatives to buy dry wood if you're not in a position to dry some. There's different kits out there in different sizes. Generally within a uh, particular manufacturer, the only real difference is the uh, rod. I got the, uh, I received this kit from uh, Craig at ChefWareKits.com. Uh, I'll have their uh, link in the... Uh, there are a number of vendors out there that sell pepper mill kits. I was furnished this kit by Craig at Chefware Kits. Uh, if you buy your uh, kit from from one particular vendor, generally the only difference from the different sizes is the size of the, the rod. It's a good idea to come up with a design before you get started and there's lots of pictures out there, Pinterest, uh, Google Images, uh, whatever. I'm using a design that I'll show here by Nick Cook that was uh, shown in a spring 2004 issue of American Wood Turner. Uh, one of the great advantages of becoming a member of the American Association of Wood Turners is you, you have over 35 years of back issues of the uh, American Wood Turner that are digital. You can download, print, uh, uh, print articles, uh, do research for. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to mount our blank, blank tween centers. We're going to rough it out with spindle roughing gas. Do draw your design. Don't expect the wood to talk to you. The only wood I know that talks is uh, dogwood and it just barks. So you're going to mark off your tenon, you're going to mark off your head, you're going to mark off uh, the bottom of the, the uh, mill head, including a tenon, and then you're going to take the rest of it and mark off the bottom, mark off the, the top of your, your mill head, and we're ready, ready to go. Let me just Mark those out a little bit more. So next thing we're going to mark the tenons as shown in this diagram here. We're going to put 3 8 inch tenons. Uh, tenon number 1, tenon number 2, tenon number 3. Mark the tenon to fit your particular chuck. And I'm going to make my tenons just a bit larger than usual. Having this wide parting tool certainly makes uh, making these tenons fast and easy. Now we're going to part off the mill head from the mill body using a narrow parting tool. Give ourselves a little bit of relief by coming back. Now we just leapfrog back and forth. Okay, next we're going to take our 
uh, body and we're going to mark the top and the bottom so we don't get confused later. Top and bottom. So now we're going to go ahead and chuck it up and do some drilling. Okay, we're getting ready to drill a 1 and 5 8 inch hole, 3 quarters inch deep. And that's not going to fit in on this mini lathe, so that, that begins our problem solving. <laughs> this one's easily resolved by going over my Powermatic. Uh, for many of y'all that have a bed extension on your lathe, uh, mini lathe, then it's no problem. Before we uh, uh, drill, we want to face this, square this end off. And I'm going to use that using my Viceroy cutter. So we're going to drill a three quarter, uh, a hole three quarters of an inch deep. Uh, so I've marked this with tape. We're just going to put that in our tailstock, and we're going to bring this up. This is a large bit, so we're going to go at a very slow speed, no more than 500. Got it locked down. Going to hold this Jacob's chuck. drilling a 1 and 1 16th inch counter bore. Uh, for many plans you're going to use 1 and 1 16th all the way through. For this one I'm not, so I need to uh, drill it at least uh, uh, 7 eighths of an inch deep. In this video please hit the like button and subscribe thank you very much back to the video because of the narrow waist design in the Nook, Nick Cook design he only calls for drilling a one inch so that's what I'm using and I have this twist drill bit one inch uh, that'll go almost all the way through but when we get a little over halfway we'll reverse it Okay, now we're going to turn turn this the body around and drill from the other side. You'll do this likely whether you use a one and one sixteenth all the way through if that's what your design calls for, or whether you're using a design like this. And I'm going to go ahead and just clean that out just a bit, so we'll center. Get the speed up a little bit. Okay. Now that ought to be able to find the center a little more easily. Bring this up. Okay, we're going to remove the mill body and replace it with a mill head. That's tenon number one. And we can finish this up on the Laguna, so I'm going to go ahead and take this chuck off and we're going to move, move back to the Laguna 1216 MIDI lathe. Okay. Now we can bring up tailstock support. Just always a good thing to do whether you need it or not. And we've previously marked this half inch uh, tenon that's going to go inside the body, so let's go ahead and take that down. Check 
do a let's do a trial fit. Just to before we go too much further. Yep. That's a snug fit. Not sloppy. All right, now we want to do a cleaning cut here, so when it rests on top of the um, the body, it, you know you won't have a gap here. So we're going to go ahead and bring up the tailstock support, and I think we're probably going to use a skew to take that facing cut off. Different kits call for a different uh, uh, drill depth here. Uh, most call for 930 seconds, but I find a one quarter inch on this. This kit will work just fine, so I'm using my hand drill. I'm not even going to bother to use a Jacobs chuck. We've already got that little divot. Get the speed down to around 1200. Get it started. And just ease it in. Okay, I can feel it busting out to the other side, and of course we're going to remove this tenon anyway. Okay, so take a spindle blank of softwood like poplar, or in this case pine, and we're going to turn a three-quarter inch spigot on it. I'm just going to measure it like this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take that down to one and five-eighths. That's good. So now we're going to go ahead and put the body Okay, I reduced size of the jam chuck so I can stay on the Laguna. Uh, remember we still have two tenons that we need to remove. Some designs you can incorporate those tenons into your design. This particular one we can't. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take it off this end. cut through. Okay, we got it back on the jam chuck and we'll do a similar uh, tenon removal on the other end. Again, I think we're going to use the shear spear to do that final cut through. Okay, now we're going to put the spindle, uh, the pepper mill head back on here and finish shaping. The top and the bottom of the uh, pepper mill head and the pepper mill uh, base uh, have a feature, and I'm just going to use this parting tool to kind of define what that is. The, the, the distance and we're kind of not going to do that until later because we don't want to reduce the friction from these uh, the drives on each end but we're going to go ahead and mark them because we need to know where we need to start that taper from so we're going to start that taper from here and here Now comes the good part, shaping. Uh, I've got the waist. The shallowest part is one and... Yeah, I'm going to take this parting cut down to one and five eighths, the shallowest part, and then I, that will allow me to take a nice fluid, uh, a bit large cove from this end to this end. So I'm using my narrow, narrow parting tool.
got to be mindful of that one inch hole through the middle. And I want to give myself just a little bit of room to control that, that sweep. Okay, now I'm going to use the spindle roughing gouge to just start making those sweeping cuts from one end to another to the center. between the mill heads and then uh, I've measured how big this head's going to be so I've marked the end of this line this is uh, this will be the very top and because I'm turning essentially large bead I've got it marked halfway and I'm going to use a skew just to bring it start bringing it down to the uh, drive no further of the tool, ride the bevel, and then cut. And then I'm going to have something very similar at this end. On this end I'm going to start start shaping with a spindle gouge. Start uh, shaping this end and bringing it down. And I think I'm just going to use a parting tool to take this down a little bit just to make it easier to mark to find it. that spindle tool and from the center we're going to knock off the edges first all right this spindle gouge turning a large beat there's three motions you're going to lift twist and roll and it rolls further as you get down so you can end with this uh, bevel uh, 90 degrees to the bedway. Now I've got to decide about taking this this waste off when I think I'm going to go ahead and do it do it now and then bring the tailstock up. So let's see. Let's see that. I safely feel like I can do this with turning so let me go get the uh, flush cut saw. And we'll take just a little pressure off. Okay, okay we can hand sand that easily. Now we can bring it up. We're back in business. And it could come down just a little bit. Got a little bit of a hump here in the middle. Okay, that's 
that's feeling nice and tapered. Okay, I think we're ready to start sanding. And I'll do that off, off camera. Putting the mechanism in is pretty straightforward. Uh, their instructions is a couple of screws that hold this, a couple of screws that hold, hold it in the bottom. Uh, I'm not actually going to fully assemble this until I do the, the finishing. If you like this video, smash the like button. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, this project, you might enjoy this project I had on turning a salt and pepper uh, shaker. I'll have a link, uh, link here. Y'all stay safe and come on back here. Okay, I thought I had a little bit more room before I could just separate these by just twisting them, but no problem.